<laughs> all right, so with all due respect to Jesse Waters, it is Elon Musk's world, and we are all living in it. And in fact, he soon says we could live in it forever. And, and that's what the, the Musk story really is all about, right, the future. I mean, take Elon's, I mean, the Tesla's earnings results. Very impressive. Uh, the real excitement, however, over those robo-taxis could be hitting the streets by 2024. Joining me now, IO Fund official technical anal analyst, Beth Kendig. And Beth, you know, Musk obviously has got the magic touch. I mean, just consider, five auto companies ran ads during the Super Bowl. The day after the game, no, Tesla's orders went to the moon. The question, of course, is can the company keep living up to the hype? Thanks, Charles. Uh, Tesla can clearly execute. There are no issues there. Revenue was up 81 De percent. Deliveries are outpacing production. Average sales price, even perhaps more impressive, up 19 percent. Um, and they have a defensible brand similar to Apple. Uh, one thing I would note on the timing of robo-taxis for 2024 is to keep an ear on Tesla and also keep an ear on NVIDIA. Uh, we are positioned there for their simulation platform. Uh, we believe training automation on a simulation platform is what is most likely to bring robo-taxis to hit the road in 2024. So I would keep an eye on both companies at this point. All right. In, in the meantime, Musk raised uh, almost <laughs> $700 million for the Boring Company. Now, that's valued at $5.7 billion. And apparently he's got funding for Twitter. Uh, on the Twitter thing, do you think he'll end up winning there? you think he'll end up getting the company? He may not win, but I do believe a takeover would be a very good thing. Clearly, Elon Musk is a power user. He knows the platform better than most. Uh, the reason why we need to see a takeover with Twitter as a platform for investors is that advertisers are not too keen on how many bots and anonymous low follower accounts there are. So I've written in the past almost 58 percent of traffic on Twitter at peak times is driven by bots. That's too low quality for advertisers. So I'm not an investor until we see that cleaned up. And I think Elon Musk understands that issue, among others. OK, now speaking of Twitter, I saw where you tweeted out that you're watching Snap in this earnings season. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. This stock, it popped in five of the last six earnings releases. In fact, last time it was up 50 percent. What are you expecting? We actually bought on day of earnings last quarter because we believe the market has confused Facebook's third party data story with Snap's first party data. Uh, there can be alpha in during those times of confusion. But what we most want to see is 20 percent daily active user growth or more somewhere around that number, because as we've seen from Netflix, uh, the market is not too kind to companies that are missing on audience growth right now in the consumer space. So all eyes on daily active user growth for me. Yeah, let me pick up on that Netflix thing. Obviously, it's a fiasco. We learned uh, yesterday Bill Ackman took a, a $430 million hit uh, in just three months. Did he give up on that investment too soon, or is it, is it writing pretty clear there? <laughs> oh, man. It's a tough day to be D Bill Ackman. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we all, we all take our turn. So I would say that I agree with the decision to sell Netflix. Uh, subscription video on demand is a 10- to 12-year-old market. Netflix should be a safe haven. It should be a larger allocation position that provide some level of safety within tech. Your mega cap, your large cap companies, if they start to slow considerably, I'm actually presenting this on Facebook this afternoon, uh, you need to be really careful of those slowdowns and those large cap, mega cap companies especially. Yeah. So I agree with his decision. Yeah, once, once they make the transition from growth <laughs> to value, that's it, that's all she wrote. Hey, I got a minute to go. Okay. There's something intriguing I wanna ask you about. Um, trading in these so-called work from home uh, stocks, right? Uh, the stocks have gotten hit, but the, it feels like it's still a phenomenon. We got the beige book yesterday, and all you read in that beige book were, you know, people working from home and businesses being accommodative, uh, no one returning. And by the way, there's also evidence that nobody's returning to the big office, offices in big cities. Could there be some, some plays down here? Has Wall Street written this off too quick? We believe they have written it off too quick. We think the sweet spot is continues to be cloud. We're seeing it, the growth a tick higher from 2019 to 2022, despite a 100 billion pull forward. But within that larger uh, trend of cloud, anything that's driving down costs is especially interesting, which is what productivity suites do. Uh, right now, we are long Asana. We foresee to be long it throughout 2022. We closed Zoom, but we are watching the company closely and continue to monitor it. Uh, there are other cloud slash productivity suite uh, companies that are being tagged work from home that we think are interesting. I got to tell you, Beth, you are absolutely phenomenal. I appreciate when you come on the show because I always learn something. Talk to you again real soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, All Charles. Right, see you.